All right, so in the next uh, set of lectures, we are going to be talking about combinational circuit synthesis. In particular, we are going to be looking at how do you simplify logic expressions using Karnoff maps or simply K maps. So in order to uh, manipulate a circuit, say you have a given algebraic representation of a logic circuit. You could have many different things going on in your head when you think about actually implementing the, that particular logic function. Can I do this with AND, OR and NOT gates, basic gates? Should I do this with NAND gates? Should I do this with NOR gates only? Uh, can I simplify the expression, which means minimize the expression? Maybe I'm thinking about cost. What does cost mean? Does cost mean number of transistors? Does cost mean amount of time it takes for the output to change? In other words, the propagation delay. What does cost mean in terms of uh, logic gates and logic functions? So we'll talk about all those things first. Then we'll take a look at one way to minimize logic expressions using K-maps. And the best part about it, it guarantees as long as you follow the rules, it guarantees you the simplest expression. One way to simplify things is to convert basic gates into NAND only synthesis or NOR only synthesis. That's one way of doing it. Why is that useful? Well, if you want to reduce the number of transistors that are used to synthesize a logic function, to implement a logic function, then by going into NAND only or NOR only, you cut the number of transistors down. Most likely, it might not happen in every case. If you start off with NAND, then it might not happen in every case, but generally it is going to happen. So how do you go from here to here? Well, we looked at that particular example where earlier in the previous class, we said, you just need to add bubbles and cancel bubbles and do, do two at a time so that logically th things don't change. So let's do that. I've got a bubble there and a bubble there. Good, I've got a bubble there and a bubble there. Good, I've got a bubble there and a bubble there. That became a three input NAND. That became a two input NAND. This actually canceled out. And this is a two input NAND in which both the NAND, both the gates, both the inputs to the gate are tied together. So that's how you convert things into a NAND only representation. Three input NAND, two input NAND, and this could also be converted into a two input NAND. So let me just write this down. So that way, and now if you counted the number of transistors used to do this versus this, you will see that it is going to be far less in C than in A. So that could be one way you say, this is the simplified version of that logic function. And you would also look at NOR gates, right? NOR only. So if you have, say, a logic function over here, and you wanted to convert into NOR only synthesis, it is in a very nice two level OR and configuration, product of some configuration. So it's, it's pretty convenient to convert such things into NOR only because all you have to do is bubble bubble, two more bubbles and two more bubbles. And right away you have uh, two input NOR, three input NOR, two input NOR, three input NOR. Done. That's all, that, that's all you have. That's all you need. So we have seen this before. We have, we have actually looked at a lot more uh, complicated examples than, than these. But this is one way of quantifying how much did you simplify a logic expression. The transistor count at the beginning, transistor count at the end, compare. So this leads us into asking what is minimization, right? Do I just worry about transistors? Do I just worry about literals? Do I just worry about the number of gates? What should I worry about? Well, it's minimization in general though, is the process of reducing a complex logic expression or equation into a simpler form. 
with fewer terms by removing redundancies. So fewer gates indicates simplification. Fewer inputs to gates also indicates simplification. So this is similar to simplifying and reducing a complex algebraic expression by combining and collecting like terms that you guys have been doing, you know, forever. And as you did in algebraic reduction, you need to follow certain rules that guarantee that the value of the expression is not changed. Same applies for Boolean expressions. You've got to make sure that logically things don't change. They should if you're trying to do two things, one in using basic gates, one using the NAND version gates, if it's the same logic expression, then it, it needs to have the same truth table. Exactly the same truth table for all the entries. So let's talk about how do you measure complexity? And actually, many textbooks talk about measuring or quantifying cost in a different way. So some textbooks say, all right, we are going to use the number of transistors as a means to calculate cost. And some other textbooks say, let us use the number of gates plus the number of inputs to those gates as a metric, a, as a cost metric. So it, there's no one consistent definition that you will see in all the textbooks, because it really depends on what you're after, what you're trying to minimize. So let's try to take a look at how do you measure complexity. In this case, we are trying to use two things to measure that. Uh, actually, we are just using the literals to measure that. Literals. So what is a variable? Well, we know, yeah, it's, it's the input variable in its true form or complemented form that appears in an expression. That's a variable. So in this case, it has three input variables, A, B, and C. But a literal is each appearance of a variable either in its true form or in its complemented form. So there are three literals over here, two literals over there, two literals over, uh, three literals over there, and two literals over here. So in terms of literals, this particular expression for Z has 10 literals. So this, this metric of literals, the number of literals, could be one way of identifying whether you have a cheaper, uh, uh, the, the complexity is uh, less or uh, the complexity is more. That's one way of doing it. The others, you could have a different rationale to, to define uh, complexity and how do you reduce it. So to reduce it, some person might come in and say, all right, just try to reduce the number of literals, which is going to be the inputs to those gates. Some other person might say, um, okay, we can worry about that or we can just try to reduce the number of gates instead of using Say, for example, over here, how many gates are you using? Well, you're using one gate here, two gates here, three gates here, four gates here, and five gates there, right? So instead of five gates, let's try to get it done in three gates, maybe. That would be one, one way of reducing complexity. Or somebody else says, let us try to reduce the number of levels of gates, which means how many levels are involved in this? If you ignore, if you ignore the... Uh, the level required to complement the inputs to absolutely right. The first level would be the AND level and the second level would be the OR level, right? We may not be able to uh, go down further. Let me give you an example of how you could try to reduce the levels. Three input OR. Mm, right. Two input R. Let's suppose they are happening at the same time. And then you are doing a R there. You see this? This is a two level circuit in which we essentially are doing a five input R. Which would be just a one level, one level equivalent. What is the problem here? Why would you ever want to not do this, but instead do this? Maximum fan-in, yes. So you, when you start doing this, you will get into the problem of fan-in limitations. So you'll have to consider doing this. But you, once you start doing this, 
then you will have more number of levels so your propagation delay increases so all those are kind of trade-offs uh so what i what i'm trying to say is that complexity can, can have you can have different rationales to define what is what is complexity number of gates number of literals number of levels of gates and for each of those categories you could try to do this these three using many strategies one could be fewer inputs implies faster gates so let's try to reduce the number of inputs let us try to uh, uh, play with the fan in like we talked about let's try to uh, uh, you know to reduce the propagation delays let's try to reduce the number of levels and you know somebody else might come in and say forget about all that let's try to look at number of transistors the bottom line is depending on how you are depending on the person who's dealing with that complexity some people might choose to do it in one way versus the other what we are going to do let me just talk about what we are going to do we are going to minimize this in this class we are going to try to minimize number of gates and number of inputs to those gates and we can do this using boolean algebra and you can do this using k maps the problem with boolean algebra is that it is not very structured and it is not you cannot just simply close your eyes and follow the rules to get the right answer you can't do that uh let's see which of the fan in it's elegant uh which of fan in and propagation delay add more time so uh this guy say all right let me add a add a add a slide here you have one situation where you have a five input or gate and the other situation you have one two three or them and then maybe put that into a one and two say this right same logic or five input r they are the same but the maximum fan in limitation could come into play with this situation because there are five of them so you might be in trouble as far as fan in requirements are concerned fan in limitations are concerned but over here maximum fan in is just three you might be okay you might not be you know playing uh, you, you, you might not be worried too much about the voltage levels but the problem with this is you have to go through this gate only then the output is ready then you'd go through that gate right so that would be increase in propagation delay at the cost of reducing fan in so less propagation delay more fan in less fan in more propagation delay So let's come to k maps or Karnoff maps. Before I start talking about k maps, I want to tell you something. K maps is one of the things that you will absolutely remember having taken this course even 10 years from now. You might forget a lot of things, but k maps, in my experience, most people tend to remember k maps better than almost everything else in this course just because of how uh, you know and it follows boolean algebra which is kind of like a painful way of doing things <laughs> and then you look at a very systematic approach of logic minimization uh, and it's graphical so you know you you tend to uh, most people tend to like that let's so let's take a look what is the motivation well the motivation is the boolean algebra simplification was not very systematic but K-maps is very systematic approach to logic expression minimization. A few things to note. One, if you follow all the rules correctly, then you are guaranteed that your answer will be in its simplest form. You, you, you don't need to wonder whether it is in its simplest form or not. It is guaranteed that you will get the simplest answer as long as you follow the rules. The first note, logic expressions are not unique. We talked about that several times. And 
even the simplest form of the logic expressions is not unique. So in terms of uniqueness, to describe a logic function, we have only looked at two things. One was the truth table and the other was the canonical forms. Almost everything else is kind of uh, failing that uniqueness test. And the same applies for simplest. So you may have two different simplest expressions representing the same logic function. That is possible. In that case, they will have the same cost. So in terms of number of inputs to the gates and the number of gates, they will be the same. But they will not be unique. They need not be unique. A K-map or a Karnov map is essentially a grid view of a truth table. So essentially we are taking a truth table and we are making it into the form of a grid. And the input variables are distributed on rows and columns of the grid. The grid contains cells with entries a 0, a 1 and with don't care situations you could also have an X. The cell entries are essentially the evaluation of that output variable for that specific row and column, meaning for that specific combination of input variables. We are going to have two variable kmap, three variable kmap, four variable kmap, five variable kmap and even though we will not do any examples of six variable kmap, our discussion will involve talking about how you would deal with six variable kmaps. What makes kmaps possible? That's the first thing that we need to understand. And we have n variable kmaps. I I think six is is pretty pretty good size of a kmap to deal with. If you want n variable kmap, you would have to almost yes, what about absolutely that's the only way to do it. That's what that's what I was gonna say. But again, when you're doing this in software, you will have a trade-off, right? You want more complexity, you will have to give up on the processing time. So the bigger the game app size, the longer it's going to take you to give you the output. Now, if you are interested in playing around with a software that um, that allows you to do these kind of things, there is a very famous, very, very old software, uh, software uh, called Espresso. Pretty old. It's using DOS. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you guys have ever come across DOS, but all right. So... <laughs> <laughs> right so it's a very simple package and you have to kind of enter things in a in a in a particular you know format um and ask the as the exe file to run on that if you're interested let me know and i can share that software with you uh if it's algorithmic then it can be computationally intensive uh yes it cannot be computationally intensive but the algorithm goes out of the window as the size of the uh, as the size of the kmap increases. Um, so for example, what I, what I mean by that is, as long as you are in the four variable kmap case, you will need only one kmap. As soon as you go to five variable kmap, you need two four variable kmaps. When you go to six variable case, you need four four variable kmaps. So the, the number of kmaps also increase as you go for the, 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 the more and more variables. Yep. So six variables is kind of like where, where you where you kind of draw the line, uh, at least on paper. All right, so what makes kmaps possible? Well, let's take a look at Boolean algebra to answer that question. Because everything, if you want to understand kmaps, it is based on this slide and this slide only. A function f, if you think, if uh, let's assume that a function f is x and y or x complement and y uh, x and y complement how would you simplify it using boolean algebra well there's a x over here there's a x over here you would pull that out as a common factor and the moment you pull that out as a common factor you are left with y or y complement in the parentheses that goes to one so you have x and now if you notice the first expression and the simplest expression for that same f you see that the variable that changed got eliminated. The variable that changed got eliminated. This is the crux of 
simplification logic simplification that statement the variable that changes gets eliminated also called as adjacency but let, let's take a look at all the rules here so um, there are uh, different ways of um, you know uh, trying to go about understanding k-maps one way is to directly jump into examples and try to learn the rules alongside the examples or the other way is let us briefly talk about the rules first and then when we start doing the examples these rules will start making more and more sense so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to list out all the rules but don't try to remember them at this point just try to be aware of them because when you start looking at the examples you can tie them back to these rules and these are all the rules that's it that 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 those are it um and we are going to first talk about how do you determine the simplest sop expression the rules are different for simplest product of some expression very similar but different so what are, what are you trying to do St rule number one you are going to group adjacent ones in your k map you will look to group adjacent ones and the size of the groups that you can make are powers of two one two four eight sixteen and and so on that's rule number one next because you are after a sum of product expression you have to cover all the ones which means that when you group the ones your groups should be covering all the ones you cannot leave any one one out the group should cover all the ones in the k map diagonal is not adjacent because diagonal means two variables are changing at the same time it is not adjacent only one variable is allowed to change like we saw the example earlier next rule edges of a k map which is a grid view of truth table wrap around that also gives you more possibilities of grouping adjacent ones it wrap, wraps around both horizontally and vertically you can combine the four corners into one group and this applies for three variable k map four variable k map and you know even higher levels in five variable six variable you can so corners can be grouped the last one is specifically for the don't care treat the don't care as a one only if it helps you make a larger group otherwise you are going to treat it as a zero because don't care you don't really care whether it's a one or a zero but it, if it helps you get a more simple answer simplified expression then you will treat it as a one and if not you will treat it as a zero The rules for the product of some expression, the simplest product of some expression are exactly the same, but with all the changes that are highlighted in red. Ones become zeros. You are grouping adjacent zeros. You are trying to cover all the zeros. Uh, your gr the group should cover all the zeros. Uh, and then at the bottom here, you treat the don't care as a zero only if it helps you make a larger group otherwise you treat it as a one so exactly the same statements except now you're trying to group the zeros the goal what are you shooting for when you're when you're trying to make the groups and all that what are you what is your goal what's your objective well the objective is to make the largest possible groups of adjacent ones in the case of sop this is, this is for the case of SO. It would be adjacent zeros for the POS. So I should try to make the largest possible. The bigger the group, the better. It is going to give me a smaller expression. And while I'm trying to go for the largest possible group of adjacent ones, I can reuse cells as many number of times as I want in order to make larger groups. Reusing cells is valid any number of times. How many largest possible groups can you make? Well, you are go your goal is to make the fewest number of groups, as few as possible. So, as few as possible 
and as large as possible. So number of groups should be small, but each group should be as big as possible. Because fewest number of groups translates into a few number of terms in the simplest expression. The bigger the group, the smaller the resulting term. And we'll take a look when we work through examples, you will see this. So bigger groups and fewest number of them. That's what you're after. Let's start with a simple two variable k map. So a two variable, why is it called a two variable k map? Because the, there are two inputs to this k map, x and y. And I said k map is a grid view of a truth table. And it looks like this is a grid view of this table. All right, so let's try to do this first. Let us try to identify each, each line in this blue, maybe pink, then green. Let's try to identify each line in the truth table with a particular cell in the k-map. So where does the, you see, what do, we ha what do I have in the, so x and y, those are my two inputs and they are going to determine for when x is 0, y is 0, what is f and so on, right? So I, I've not filled up the output column yet. But I've taken a two table and translated that into a grid view and I'm calling that a two variable k map. Okay, let's try to take a look. What did I do here? Well, I have distributed x on the two columns and I have distributed y on the two rows. That's how I got that grid. And how do you, how many cells do you have? Well, you have cell here, cell here, cell here, cell here. You have got four cells exactly corresponding to the four entries in the game, uh, truth table. So now the question is, which colors map to which color, which cells in the K-map? How about the cell here? What should I paint here? All right. Looks like that is the place when X is zero and Y is zero. Sure. What about the next one? I'm talking about this guy. X is 1, Y is 0. Uh, pink, okay. <laughs> what is this guy? X is 0, Y is 1. Right? And of course, we are left with 1 where X is 1 and Y is 1. Yes. Can I see that? Okay, so now we know how each entry in the truth table maps to each cell in the k-map. The next thing that we can do is uh, we can take a look at an example. We'll do some random example. Can you guys tell me? Well, we'll just do 0, 1, 1, 1. Let's, let's do that. So let's do 0 and then 1 and then 1 and then 1. How did you come up with that? Well, I just chose some arbitrary values in the output column for dealing with an example. No logic, uh, just an arbitrary sequence, uh, just an arbitrary output here, 0, 1, 1, 1. And because I know the colors, I, I can just say, all right, that zero goes there, that, z that one goes there, everything else is a one. Okay, so now that is done. I'm gonna start looking at now I have taken the uh, two table and I've translated that into the k-map. I'm done with the two table now. Now I need to look at the groups. But before I do that, I'm going to erase the colors because I think by now you guys get it. That's your k-map. And here I could have started looking at the simplest SOP or POS. So for, for the beginning, I'm going to say I am after simplest SOP, right? I'm going to try to do the simplest SOP first, which means I'm trying to make groups of ones as big as possible and as fewer of them as possible. So the first question that you need to ask is, can I make a group of four ones? First question. Can I make a group of four ones? Because that's the max that is possible, right? They, all four could have been one, 
that is the only way I could make a group of four ones. So the answer is obviously no, because the, there is a zero that spoils that. Okay, so the next question that you ask is what? Can I make a group of three ones? No, I, I can't even ask that question. I can't even ask that question. The groups have to be size 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on. 3 is not a power of 2. So I cannot even ask that question. I shouldn't ask that question. I should say, can I make a group of 2 ones? Yes. How many of them? Two of them. Yes. So let's let's try to identify them. I need to find two adjacent ones and form a group. So I've got one group there. Ah, come on. One group there and another group right here. Did I cover all the ones? Yes, I did. All the ones in the K-map have been covered. There are no don't get situations over here, so I don't need to worry about that right now. I've covered all the ones and I'm done. That's it. I don't need to worry about asking any more questions. So what does this particular group map to? Well, over here, X was one. Over here, X was one. Which means x is 1 for both these guys and y is changing. The variable that changes gets eliminated. y is changing. y gets eliminated. What do you get? You get x. What about here? For the red guy. x is changing. y is 1. So why? And that's it. That gives us our answer. The function f, the simplest SOP expression for f is x or y. Should be in blue. Should be in red. Questions about this example? This sounds like that cellular automation thing. Conway's came up like, okay. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at a couple more examples here. Um, let's do two of them on this slide. The first one is, again, a two-variable case. I've already translated the k-map into a, um, sorry, I've already translated the truth table into a k-map. I've already filled in the zeros and the ones. Uh, so, first question, can I make a group of four ones? No. Can I make a group of two ones? No. Can I make a group of one one? Yes. All right. So this guy doesn't have any friends. Cannot be combined with anyone. Uh, so it has a special name. It is called a singleton. <laughs> all right. So that's it. Did I combine it with all? Uh, did I cover all the ones? Yes, I covered all the ones. I'm done. What would be F? Well, over here it looks like x is a 0 and y is a 0. x is a 0 and y is a 0. Simplest SOP expression for f. Alright. What about this, you guys? Can I make a group of Four ones. 
simple turn <laughs> No, so can I make a group of two ones? I, I think you guys get yeah, this is very similar to the first example. So there's one here and one here. Okay, so let's say, uh, and this is all right. All right. Uh, let's let us do blue first. y is changing x is one x what about for the red guy what would be the product term for the red group not y yes so y, x is changing gets eliminated y is zero so y complement so f is if chosen black x or y complement um on this slide the examples that you see can i say for only for these examples can i say that the simplest form the simplest sop form is unique just for these examples yes so the simplest sop form just for these two cases is uh, is unique all right let's try to um build a three variable k-map and you know we are coming up to the close of the 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 class time here so we'll try to stop with the three variable k-map so what changes well now you have three variables a b c you only have two dimensions, right? You only have two dimensions in terms of rows and columns. So you can either have two columns and four rows, or you can have four columns and two rows. Either one will work fine. I just try to stay consistent with things that I've practiced over so many years, which is I'm going to lay my three variable K map like this which means that I'm distributing two variables on the four columns and I'm distributing the one variable in this case C on the two rows. Uh, let's see. Am I missing something? What is X slash Y is changing when you look at the complete map? Uh, Andrew, are you talking about things over here? So the, the, the skeleton of the Two variable k map is input x is distributed on the two columns and the input y is distributed on the two rows right this column corresponds to when x is zero this column corresponds to when x is one this row corresponds to when y is zero and this row corresponds to when y is one so that will give you the four possibilities that you can have in a two variable truth table and then whatever you have for f, you fill in here, 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 and here. That's your output. And then you start combining. All right, no problem. Okay, so let's come back to this. So what I did was I distributed a and b on the four columns here, and I distributed c on the two rows here. Now, one thing to notice, when you have two variables, a and b, they will have four possibilities, and hence the four columns. But notice what is different here. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Oh, maybe there's a mistake. So this should go here. This should come here, right? Is that is that something that I would want to do? Or I shouldn't do that? I can't do that. I can't do that because that spoils adjacency. You see what is happening between these two things? Both A and B are changing at the same time. So these two columns are not adjacent, which means when I start doing the groups, I cannot do a group like that. I cannot allow things to change 
at the same time. I can only allow one variable to change that brings in the adjacency and that's what helps me make the group and then eliminate that variable that changed. So in order to stay consistent with only one variable can change, what I'm going to do is a gray code between the two inputs. Gray code is a code in which only one bit changes at a time. So 0, 0, 0 to 0, 1, only one bit changed. 0, 1 to 1, 1, only one bit changed. 1, 1 to 1, 0, only one bit changed. So this is the absolute correct three variable k map. There are, like I said, there are other ways, right? Like you, some people can have it like this. That's fine as well. Uh, but I, I like it this way. And also, there is no rule that you have to have A, B, C over here if you have A, B, C over here. There's no such rule. You can have, you can mix and match your K maps as long as you pay attention to where each of these go, right? So what I'm going to do is to make my life easy, I'm going to use a row number, an index for each row. So I'll say this is row 0, row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, row 5, row 6, and row 7. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write those particular row numbers in a small font but inside the K map. So let's see. Uh, row 0 is what? Uh, A0, B0, C0. Alright, so that goes over there. Row 1, C is 1. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And I do this for, you know, every K map that is of a three variable size or bigger. Don't do that for the two one because that's pretty simple. So now once you have identified which row corresponds to which cell in the K map, and you see the numbering scheme, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 went here, 5, 6, and 7 because of that flip in that adjacent because of twist to maintain adjacency we flip that all right so next what do we do is we fill up the f in the in the table so let's say we have a black color chosen here so what do we have zero one one zero all right then you have one zero one one all right done i'm done with the two table i'm left with the k map what should i ask first what should be my first question? Can I make a group of eight ones? Again, I'm for the SOP. I'm still working on the SOP. Uh, right, no. The so next question, can I make a group of four? Four ones. Our four ones. It's actually still no. Yes, I still can't make four ones. Uh, so next question is, can I make a group of two ones? Answer will be yes. Many. Let's try to take a look. Oh, three of them. All right, let's see. Um, I'm going to use blue here first. So clearly this guy can be grouped there. This guy can be grouped there. Yeah, uh, maybe I change the color here. Ah. Uh, sure. And then I can pink purple maybe. Uh, this guy can be grouped over here with this. So this example shows you how you are reusing cell number 6 three times. You are reusing cell number 6 three times just so that you can make a bigger group. Right? So you have got three groups of two ones. Uh, do you guys ask me what? Hey. 
I'm using good notes 5. Uh, maybe seven maybe seven dollars eight dollars i'm not sure exactly how much it cost uh, i paid eight dollars for it like three years ago uh, i don't know I, I i don't know mambo five thank you guys uh all right so here we have we are actually Three minutes over time. I'm, I'm going to quickly wrap this up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we have, I, I still need th this guy to be friends with someone. Uh, can this guy make friends with someone? No. He is a singleton. All right. So let's try to quickly write uh, the product terms for <laughs> each of them. Uh, let's start with blue one. All right. So what should I write for the blue term? A is one. B is one. C is changing. So it is A and B. Yes. All right. How about for the green guy? uh not c okay so you see whenever you have a group of two you are going to have in a three variable k map you are going to have something that has two inputs like this so c complement and b let's see for this group of green a is changing right b is a one c is a zero so this should be c is a zero b is a one so C complement and B or B complement and C uh, B B and C complement also works. All right, let's do the next one. Uh, purple, sure, right here. A is a one, B is changing, that is out, and C is a zero. Yes. How about for the orange guy? I will not try to make fun of this. Uh, so it looks like this is just a group of one one, which means that it has to be more costly. You see that it is more costly. It needs three things now, three literals now. Uh, let's see. What is that? A is a zero, B is a zero and C is a one. That's it. That's your answer then. So I can I can write my answer way at the bottom here for F, which is uh, a complement B complement C or uh, C complement and B or A and C complement or A and B. And when you look at this, you know, if I if I said, hey, is this the simplest expression or not? It would be quite difficult to say yes or no. But because we have followed the rules of KMAP and we have gone through the process KMAP guarantees that this is the simplest SOP expression that you can have for this particular logic function f. Alright, let us stop over here. I'm going to stop recording.